Hello guys, welcome to Law Putra YouTube channel and our today's topic is the Indian Evidence Act 1872 which is going to complete its 150 years this 1st of September. Today we will discuss about the leading questions which, which are covered under section 141 to section 143. I am Jagannath Kulkarni. Let us see what is this Indian Evidence Act 1872 is comprised of in a nutshell, first, it covers three parts. It is divided into three parts. The first part is about the relevancy of facts, which covers 58 sections, under which chapter 1 is preliminary from section 1 to section 4. Chapter 2 talks about the relevancy of facts from section 5 to section 55. Second part talks about on proof, which covers 55 sections, in which Chapter 3 talks about the facts which need not be proved from section 56 to section 58. Chapter 4 talks about of oral evidence covering section 59 to section 60. Chapter 5 talks about of the documentary evidence from section 61 to section 90. Chapter 6 talks about of the exclusion of oral evidence by documentary evidence from section 91 to section 100. Part 3 talks about the production and effect of evidence covering 72 sections total in which chapter 7 talks about the burden of proof from section 101 to section 114a then chapter 8 talks about of the estoppel from section 115 to section 117 chapter 9 talks about of the witnesses from section 118 to section 134 Chapter 10 talks about of the examination of witness from section 135 to section 166 and which is going to be the talk, topic of our today's discussion. Chapter 11 talks about of the improper admission and rejection of evidence covering only one and last section that is section 167. Now let us talk about this today's uh, part 1 relevancy of facts 58 sections which covers chapter 1 preliminary, chapter 2 relevancy of facts from section 1 to section 4 and then section 5 to section 55. These are all parts just we have discussed right now. And today we will start with our discussion with part 3 which is about the production and effect of evidence under which chapter 10 talks about of the examination of witnesses in which section 141, section 142 and section 143 we will be discussing today. Section 141 talks about the leading questions. We will discuss about its meaning, examples and what the case laws are. Section 142 talks about as to when these questions must not be asked and section 143 talks about when these leading questions may be asked right so we'll talk about the first section 141 which discusses about the meaning of leading questions so the section says any question which is suggesting the answer which the person putting it that is putting that question wishes or expects to receive is called a leading question. So this is very simple definition of leading question. A question which itself contains the answer can be called as the leading question. Now let us see what the jurists talk about it. We will discuss about the Bentham who says it is a question which is indicated to the witness in a manner that the real or supposed fact which the examiner expects and desires to have confirmed with the witness. This is what Bentham talks about the leading question. And now let us see what Salmon says. He says it is a question 
which is asked which assumes the presence of the fact in issue which is most important concept in the evidence act and which suggests the desired answer so these are the two jurists which talks about the leading questions meaning there is one more given by lord allen boro he says it is the type of question which directly or indirectly hints the answer which needs to be given by the witness which is framed by the examiner so it is the examiner of the witness who frames such question leading question and so this is the leading question which directly or indirectly hints the answer so in nutshell we can say leading questions are the questions in which the answer is itself indicated or contained and answer is hinted directly or indirectly now let us see what the what are the examples of the leading questions very simple the question like don't you live in some place say kanpur obviously it the, the anyone can know that uh, the examiner or the questioner wants to have the answer as kanpur there can be the question like is ahmed not your friend obvious he will say yes he is ahmed is my friend or didn't you belong to orissa or any place any state obviously the answer hinted is orissa so these are the types of leading questions now let us see next section that is section 142 which talks about when such questions leading questions must not be asked now let us see leading questions must not be asked when when it is objected to by the adverse party right now who can be the adverse party depends now for the examination in chief which is conducted by the person who is calling the witness that is the examination in chief then the adverse party will be obviously the other party if such other party the adverse party objected to such questions they must not be asked when when in an examination in chief or in a re examination except with the permission of the court even if the adverse party objects to such leading questions it is the court's discretion which may allow the, that such type of questions may be asked in examination in chief or re examination now the court shall permit the leading questions as to matters which are introductory or undisputed or which have in its opinion been already sufficiently proved so the court's discretion is there and court will dis- use its discretionary power in these two types of cases now let us see what the next section that is section 143 permits it says when these leading questions may be asked in the first last section 142 it says it must not be asked now it says these leading questions when they can they may be asked so leading questions may be asked in cross examination cross examination is the most important part of examining examining the witnesses and so leading questions may be asked not must be asked it they may be asked and that is the skill of the examiner skill of the uh, person who is examining the witnesses now let us see uh, why we say that leading questions may be asked in cross examination what are the objectives behind it to adjudicate the matter in a fair and non arbitrary way this is the first objective then to maintain the purity of the witness and examining the correctness of his own statement and identification of credibility and validity of witness in true legal sense this must be given so these are the objectives now what are the advantages leading questions they save the timings of the court they are meant to avoid the debate on trivial matters they are the useful conclusions must take place for fair proceedings and the court must lead in a specific and meaningful direction and goal of proceeding must be set to go in a evident direction then take us to the root of the main issue in question these are the leading questions they take us to the root and hidden assumptions may be uncovered by the way of leading questions and sometimes the complex situations with the help of cause and effect 
and analysis of deductions. So these are the advantages of reading questions. Then let us see the case laws. We will discuss about three case laws. The first case talks about the Burki Joseph versus State of Kerala. The court said it is not permissible that questioner is asking questions in a way that witness can answer in yes or no only. This enabling the witness to elicit such answers. There can be cannot be any subjectiveness, either yes or no, objective type of this thing. And then the, because this is the violation of Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, which talks about the personal life and liberty. Because when such questions are asked, whose answer can only be yes or no, then obviously it is the violation of Article 21. And question cannot be asked in a manner that its answer can be given in only yes or no. Why? Because it infringes the right to fair procedure and trial. Let us see the next case. This is again one of one famous case, Barindra Kumar goes versus and others versus Emperor. It is a British uh, era case. Court should be there to ensure the validity of a leading question, whether it can be asked or it cannot be asked. And court must be present to check the permissibility of the question. And it is the court who determines the validity of leading question, not in the hands of the counsel who is asking the leading question. So court's discretion, court's judgment, court's the judgment about the leading question is very important. And the third case law we can see is the Prakash versus State of Maharashtra. It's again 1975 case. The court held decency and decorum must be maintained while putting the leading questions. Most important thing, it should not embarrass, annoy the witness. And they can only be permitted if that question has reasonable grounds to think that may be true. And scandalous questions are prohibited. So these are the important case laws we can see about the leading questions. So with this, we come to the close of this session that is the leading questions from section 141 to section 143. Thank you.